Mm-hmm. Warren Buffett's favorite market indicator hits 200%, signaling stocks are overpriced and a crash may be coming. Business insider story. The Buffett indicator takes the combined market capitalization of all publicly traded U.S. stocks and divides it by the most recent quarterly figure for gross domestic product. Investors use it as a rough gauge of the stock market's valuation relative to the size of the economy. The Wilshire 5000 total market index climbed as high as $44.3 trillion on Tuesday, while the la- uh, latest estimate for the first quarter GDP is $22.1 trillion, putting the Buffett indicator at 200%. That reading is well above the 187 it reached in the second quarter of 2020 when the pandemic was in full swing and GDP was 12% lower. The billionaire investor Berkshire Hathaway CEO added that the indicator hit a record high during the dot-com bubble. That should have been a very strong warning signal of the crash to come. The yardstick also spiked in the lead up to the global financial crisis, making it a useful tool for anticipating market downturns. This is not looking good. If he's accurate, it's looking like market yeah. crashes coming. Tom, what are your thoughts Here, on this? Here's my thoughts on this. I don't care if it's Warren Buffett or Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> if he's drunk in Margaritaville right now, what about this country and the world right now screams of stability, strength, and consistency? Do I think a market crash is coming? Hell yes. Okay? I don't know when. I don't know why. I don't know how. But do I think it'll eventually happen? I'm going to go with a yes. How many people that are really, really successful in the market have to come out and say, this thing's about to crash before people start going, this thing's got to crash. The, what's his name from the big short? Um, uh, My, the doctor? What's no, his name? no, 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 no. What's his name? Uh, are you kidding me? We follow this guy. Uh, Kai, uh, what's his name? Michael Burry? Yeah. Michael Burry, yeah. Yeah, he, he said this three months ago. Um, th- this is, look, uh, what what are we gonna do? We're gonna go to negative interest rates. I mean, what how, how much what what can how much longer can the Fed, the Fed keep blowing air in this balloon? Uh, eventually, there has to be a correction. Eventually, we have to recognize. I mean, the the White House is still trying to claim that we're one percent inflation. We're one percent inflation. Lumber <laughs> lumber is up one hundred and fifty percent. People are buying houses at over market value because they don't think new houses are gonna be built. This thing is coming and it's coming hard and heavy. This thing now the big thing the big question I has I have because this is something that that's above my pay grade how do we insulate ourselves from it I'm I'm over leveraged in crypto as it is I'm way over leveraged in crypto but how do we insulate ourselves this thing is coming we could see it like a slow motion train wreck it's happening well, right in front of us how right? do we insulate ourselves here's a, ride, ride it here's, out. A, here's a question for you here's a question for you what is the difference between a market crashing like it did in 08, and a market tank 38%, right? I mean, it was a scary time when a market tank 38%, the whole mortgage, you know, real estate bubble that we yep. had, or in late 90s when the tech bubble, the whole same thing happened there as well in Silicon yep. Valley. What is the difference between a market crash and uh, major hyperinflation? What's the difference? The, the time, the, the amount of time it takes to recover. So what is the difference? Uh, let me ask the question one more time. So one is the market crashes, yeah. meaning the Dow goes from... Whatever, thirty. What is it right now? Thirty-four thousand well, and change. Thirty-three thousand and change. Mm. So the Dow goes from thirty-four thousand to twenty-two thousand, versus the Dow stays thirty-four thousand, goes to forty thousand. But your money's but inflation half. goes up ten percent. What is the difference? I, I would guess a lot of wealthy people are going to be less wealthy in a crash as opposed to inflation, where it affects everybody day to day. That would be my uh, microeconomic explanation for you. Ebbs and flows. Markets can crash and then they can rise. Inflation never goes back down. So the value will never come back. That's the point. So the point is, in a situation like this, either Buffett's going to be right, we're going to have a major market crash, or we're going to have hyperinflation. One of the two is going to happen. If it's hyper... Fun. Fun. Just, Good just options. So, just so you know, if the market crashes, look, everybody loses money, Okay. But if there's hyperinflation, guess what happens? The rich get richer and the gap gets wider. Yeah. Why? Because the rich own, they have more equity, and the poor don't. Yeah. The poor are day-to-day cashing mm-hmm. spending. So if it does happen that it is hyperinflation, this means if you don't own assets that are not duplicatable, you're going to lose a lot. Pensioners if really, you, really should be afraid, if people you, with pensions. If you own assets that are not duplicatable, you're about to make a lot of money. So, But either way, it's, it's very important to understand the difference between the two. Market crash is one thing. Yeah. Inflation is another thing. 
inflation may happen and some wealthy people sure. may be sitting there saying, listen, I, shoot, I don't care. My, my you know, $10 million, uh, you know, my $100 million real estate portfolio is now $150 million. Yeah. yeah. People can't afford it. I get it. It's expensive. I get it. But guess what? I'll, I take, lo- I'll, take, right. lo- I'll take loans but off of it. But a person who doesn't own any assets, they're sitting there saying, I can't afford to pay $10 for this gas. I can't afford to pay $6 for this milk. So that's what we're going to, one of those two is going to happen. And I'm, and I'm thinking the inflation is going to hit the poor sure. and middle America way harder than Always the market. Could there be something a little bit more in the middle, like a correction? Or is he going all out crash? I mean, there is a little bit of a difference there, too. We're, we're going to have both happening at the same time. We're all, we are already in the beginning stages of inflation, whether it gets to hyperinflation. Yeah. I hope that there's really, really smart people. I don't think both is going to happen. You mean to tell me you think the market's going to, like, where's it going to crash? Tell me where Dow's. Can you pull up Dow right now? How, how can they keep rates this low? No, they, I know that. But but can you pull up Dow right now? Pull up Dow right now. Okay. Um, Dow is 34,000. Go to five year. Yeah, go to the five year. That was good. So five year is what? Uh, uh, I mean, just go to max. Forget it. Go to max. Okay. If you go to max from 1986. Okay. It was uh, 1981. 993. 1986. Keep going slowly. Do exactly what you're doing. Go slowly. Okay. When don't we hit 2000? Go to 2000. Okay. 2000 is what? 87. Okay. When do we hit 3000? Go, 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 go. Let me go, ask go. you this. Watch this, though. But I want to show you something here. Keep going. 3,000. Keep going. Go to the next market uh, high before it drops. Go to, like, whatever it looks like, 2,000. Keep going. Boom. We hit 11,000 right there, wherever it was. I just saw 11,000. Okay, 11,192. Give me the low. Give me the low right after that. What's the low? Okay, we dropped 30%, let's just say. Now, go to the high in 2007. We hit 14,000. What's the drop? 6,500. Go to the low. Uh, 6,500. I remember that. Yeah, okay. 2008, yeah. Now go, keep going up, keep going up, keep going up, keep go- this entire time, Gerard. Just so you know, we're printing money this entire printing time. Money, I don't man. know if you know that. Or we keep printing money. We keep printing money. We keep printing money. We keep printing money. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. 128 months of economic expansion. Boom. Then COVID happens. It drops to what? 18 thou. I think it's 18 thou. If you get it right. We've had six trillion since February of 2020. You're printed. right. Six trillion. What I'm trying to say to you is, I don't think the market's going to crash. I think inflation and interest rates are going to hit the market when it does. <laughs> to me, it is a form of a market crash. But those who don't own assets that are not duplicatable are about to get destroyed. Yeah, got to have the, property. The, well, you know the whole thing about rich get rich or poor get poor. Rich get rich. Guy asked me a question one time, Chris. He, st- he got animated. He was upset. You rich people. He's still over. You rich people. This was in 09, 2000. You rich people. You have all your money probably in offshore accounts. I'm like, dude, I don't have, I don't, I don't have any offshore. Do what they still have those? So, so yeah, you, you rich people do this. I said, what, what you rich people? Here's what rich people do. Look at the gap. You cannot tell me this is not a Republican or a Democratic thing. It is a thing that's happening. Everybody agrees that rich keeps getting rich and poor gets, uh, keeps getting poor. Yes, because there's this thing called compound interest. If I'm making 12% a year or 10% a year and you keep wasting your money, making a half a percent on a saving account, you're right. You are never going to compete. You're losing against you're inflation. You're losing every single year. So you ought to study how to. So. Let's just say inflation happens. So now it becomes the hedge. How do I hedge against the market crash? How do I hedge against the market crash? Gold. What other way? Property. What other way? Ethereum. Ethereum. Now okay. Talking. How, now how do talking. I hedge against the market crash? How do I hedge against the market crash? <sighs> depending on my age, depending on my age, on where you are, maybe go look at the way your money's managed. How yeah. much equities do you have? How much bonds do you have? How much fix do you have? Where's your money at based on your age? So you may want to have your portfolio. See, I'm, a little, I'm a little afraid because my parents have been saving for retirement, saving, saving, saving. Yeah. They've, they've been austere for years for retirement. And they're going to save a certain amount of money that they think is going to be good enough for them to live out the remainder of their life. And if inflation hits, that money is going to be halved. Hmm. So, and, they, and they're not going to have the wherewithal. And I don't want them to have the wherewithal uh, and ability to go out and be an earner into their 70s. That's not that that, I don't want that for my parents. But if they think that they're going to save five million dollars and that's going to hold them for the next 20 years, and that turns out to be two, essentially two and a half million dollars in in, in equity, that that's going to be that that's that's a pretty devastating thing. You know what we're learning today with the conditions that we have? It is so weird what we've done with print. This printing money thing is a new thing. This printing money is Mm -hmm. not like a they robbed us. Yeah, they gave it. They gave it to themselves yes you're right they did and by the way even Stephen Dr- uh, Stanley Druckenmiller who's a uh, 10 billion you know guy worth 10 billion we showed on the last podcast he says you have yeah. no idea how much money I've made during yeah. this time he says they keep printing money thinking the money flows to the poor in the middle of America it never does all the money flows all the way to the top it goes to Raytheon well, all I'm saying to you is 
the, the form of a market crash, I think if it happens, it's subtle. It's not as big as people think. Maybe a 20 to 30 percent, you know, there may be something like that. But that's going to be a time that's not going to last a long time. The inflation, if this happens, if milk goes $8, yeah. if you're buying gas, the, if yep. gas goes to, I predict that gas is going to be 5 to $10. To $10. Raise, I predict it's going to go 5 to $10. $10 the next, gas is nuts. But that's that's but ten dollar gas is nothing to a person who has money. So I'm trying to tell you, ten dollar gas. So so it's not a market crash. It's those who are not making the right decisions financially today. If somebody's listening to this and they're saying, "Well, Pat, how do I, how do I fight against this?" Here's what I will say: Whatever you're doing, the next couple of years, make money and figure out a way to buy some assets that are not duplicatable. Give me an example of non-duplicatable assets. Can a, can a person duplicate land? No. Okay. No. Can a person duplicate gold? Can a person duplicate Bitcoin? Can a person duplicate a Michael Jordan rookie card? Can a person duplicate a Mickey Mouse? You know the Wayne Gretzky card I sold? You know the Wayne Gretzky card? Did you hear about what happened with well, the Wayne Gretzky it card? Sold again. That it was sold not, again. That's not your card. I, that's, it was there was six two of them. Ago. It was the other guy's the, card. The one, the, the, the $3 one million I sold, card? I sold it for $1.29 million. Okay? Six months ago. There was two of those cards. I had the PSA 10. The other guy had the PSA 10. Mine was a little lesser quality than the other PSA 10. The people who knew, like there's three Mickey Mantle cards right now that are PSA 10, right? 52 tops. The, the lowest quality PSA 10 because they gauge it based on when it was graded. So depending on when your card got mm -hmm. graded, it's a more legitimate PSA uh -huh. 10. So that's how they gauge it. So if you got gauge a certain area, well, they're we giving away PSA 10s. If you got gauge in a later era, well, they're not giving away PSA 10. So the, the three numbers. I'm going to start buying goes, packs of cards like lottery it's tickets. It's between $15 million to $30 million. The difference between the three Mickey Mantle what? cards. What? Between $15 million to $30 million. The lowest PSA 10, the highest PSA 10. My Mickey, my uh, Wayne Gretzky card I sold six months ago for $1.29 million. It was a record. Most expensive hockey card ever sold. The record got broken last week. The card sold for $3.5 million. Yeah. Same exact card, except owned by the other guy. Three and a half million dollars because you cannot duplicate a Gretzky <laughs> some card. So some socialist is listening to this in a, in a Brooklyn cafe and their yeah. blood is boiling yeah. right now. All I'm, saying, boiling. all I'm saying to you right now is you have to take your finances very seriously. Market crash, fine. Inflation, scary. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why, incredibly scary if inflation, inflation well, takes place. Well, look, this is reflecting Jimmy Carter's administration. It and, really and, is. And, and inflation was never higher than then, and the exact same thing is probably going to happen. I mean, he's following the playbook of one of the least successful presidents we've ever had. Well done. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.